So, uh, Dr. Durin Robin for our day, technically on predictive health care analytics using machine learning. So, first, I'm going to introduce about them. So, Dr. Durin Robin is the Director of Computational Intelligence Research Foundation. She received her BTEC from Medras University, MTEC, and the PhD from Mandar University. Her research area includes a parallel and distributed computing, peer to peer computing, grid, uh, grid computing, big data analytics. She published more than 30 research papers in the computer journal and in conference. She is a reviewer for computer and electrical and electrical engineering journal and the future generation computer science journal. She had been the resource person for the workshop on digital classroom with data analytics using Hadoop, data science in Python, machine learning, data deep learning, and uh, cognitive computer and software testing. So I invite uh, Dr. Dodi Robin to start the session. Welcome once again, you, once again, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, Professor Ariwari, for having invited me uh, to give Hi, the, you, to give the talk on predictive healthcare analytics uh, to the faculty and the researchers of uh, VIT Vellore, right? Uh, VIT Vellore, I've been there for a couple of times, and today it gives us immense pleasure to meet you all today in this wonderful platform. All right, and uh, before we start, you, do you want to have an active session or a passive session? So probably if you all could have your cameras on, it will be really, really wonderful so that uh, we will know, right, how are we, because it's going to be a half a day session, like, like one and one and a half hour session. Those who could uh, switch on your cameras kindly, please do switch on your cameras. And today is a very special session for me. And this year, I completed my 50 talk. And today, this talk is my 51 talk of this year, 2022. I'd been into like online face-to-face -face and online sessions. And um, uh, before I start the session, yeah, I hope you're, you'll all be able to put your answers, share your answers on chat. Can you share your, whether if you are a professor, you can have it like professor, P-R-O-F slash C-S-C, you can have it like C-S-C or IT or whatever it is. Or any department you belong to. I don't know. Team members. All right. The stat application is available only for MS Teams. Huh? It's not uh, for on the chat web. Chat option is disabled. Yeah, yeah. That's what even I'm saying. The chat option is disabled. That's fine. That's fine. That's not a problem. So I'm happy to have you all here. And uh, today, how many of you have worked in data analytics? Uh, if you are new, you can say new, or if it is, if you already know about it, you can say, no, I know it. You can feel free to, right? If you know, you can tell me that you know. If you are new, you can say, I'm new. Because we have not got a chat options. OK, if you know, at least click raise hands. Those who know about data analytics, can you click raise hands? Yes, please. OK, those who don't know about analytics, can you click raise hands? Okay, thank you, Professor Manigandan. What about others? I, I, many times, yeah, I could see like Gautam, Professor Gautam, right? Yes, Arivari, Professor Anandita. Thank you, thank you. There's always a type that we could communicate, even the chat works, or if it doesn't work, that's not a problem because this digital equipment helps us uh, to learn something more about it, trying to explore. Always, I always used to uh, tell, expect to be unexpected in your life, right? We will not know what is going to happen, but always expect the unexpected, 
So here in the session, we are going to see about the basics of analytics, especially data analytics, and in addition, specific to healthcare, right? In specific to healthcare. So let's start the session. Thank you all for your good responses, right? Thank you all for your good responses. Thank you, ma'am. Is my screen is shared with you? Okay, can one of you unmute and say whether my screen is shared? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. So today we have got some of you said you're new to analytics. Uh, for some you responded, for some you didn't respond. Whatever it is, it is fine, right? And once again, I would like to thank the IIT Baylor Institute of Technology uh, for having invited me for the session online FTP onto this. So healthcare is very, very important to mine, especially when you go on for predictive analytics, right? So what is predictive analytics? You predict something, right? And it is one of the most popular topic in health analytics. Right? We use your history. What is a predictive model? Right? To be very, very short, a predictive model uses the historical data, looks from the data, finds the pattern, the data patterns in specific, and it generates accurate prediction. You have historical data, right? And you learn from the pattern of data. And you find what kind of patterns that, that this data will tell that this particular disease is predominant on a particular patient or is not a patient and generate accurate prediction. This predictive model does not only apply uh, only for healthcare, but also for a couple of um, uh, applications. Okay, can one or two, can you unmute and say, I always would like to have an interactive session so that you can also follow and I can also, the days be like I'm just speaking to the computer. Right, for example, I will give you one more example. You are all faculties. How many of you are faculties? Teaching faculties, can you click raise hands? Quick, please. Yes, one, two, three. Only three faculties are here. Four. Click raise hand if you are a faculty. Click raise hands if you are a teaching faculty. Only one? one yeah, Satya Kumar sir, Gautam professor, Saravanan sir, Jay Prakash, Manik, Arun Kumar sir, Sujata ma'am. All right, Jay Prakash sir, all right, all right, all right. And I think even some of them. And your professor. So when the students come to you on day one of your first semester, we will we have very less knowledge about the students' behavior, the academic performance, right? Once the same student, when they come to semester four, as a faculty, what experience evaluating the student on semester one, day one, and seeing the same student on semester four? Can one of you share your experience, please? As a can one of you share is my question clear you are seeing like every year we are seeing different set of students you see a student on semester one and the same student he travels from semester one to semester two semester two to semester three and semester four what is your class of faculty teaching faculty what is the kind of evaluation evaluating his students right from semester one the same students as he traveled to semester four i wish any one of you to unmute and speak please yes please i'm hope i hope i'm audible of you could unmute, you can speak. Whether you have the option of unmuting. Is my question clear? Could you be able to answer it, please? Anybody this? Or do you just want to be silent? Yes, uh, Professor Arun Kumar, sir, can you please? Hello. Yes, please. Yes, I'm actually uh, as time passes, probably we'll understand more about the students' capability mm. and interest in the subject actually. Yeah. 
well done thank you so much in comparison with semester one we don't have much knowledge about the student right yes. thank you so semester one, we don't have much knowledge about the student. But when the students, they travel from semester one to semester two to semester three, and they reach to semester four, we'll be able to judge the behavior, especially, and how they do in academics. And you will have a predictive model. And you will say the student will pass the end semester. For some students, we'll say definitely this student, will, this student will not pass through. Some students will say it's doubtful whether he will pass or not. He or she will pass or not. Right? These are the things as a faculty you predicted using your historical data. How did the student speak? How is he responding in the class? How is he doing his internal assessment? Right? How, whether he's focusing on his academics properly. Right? These are different parameters you with the historical data. Listen carefully, you are learning the patterns of the data and you evaluate the students and you develop a predictive model. All these prediction runs in our own brain. All right. Can one or two give me some examples where, the, where you need to apply prediction? Any real-time applications? Like the student pass or fail is one question. Can you tell me? You can click raise hands. You can feel free to unmute and speak. Yes, please. We're all faculties. You can. Good morning, ma'am. Yes. Uh, I can say applicant rate of an employee in any. We are going to predict whether the deploy is going to sustain for two years or not. Ah, well said. Thank you. Hands off to Professor Manas Gautam, sir. Right? Employee prediction. The way they get involved in the job when a task is assigned to them. Or they are going out of their boundaries and trying to complete the task, what is assigned, more than expected. Then you can have a prediction whether this particular employee is going to sustain with us for the next two years or he may leave. Well done. Thank you so much. I'll try to get one more real-time example. I'm really happy getting good examples. One more example, please. Absence or presence of a disease. Absence or presence of a disease. Thank you, Professor. So absence or presence. Say, for example, if you take the blood sugar level, if it is less than 140, all right, if it is going to be less than 140, then we say that we have got like after before fasting, after fasting like 180 okay uh, less than 180 then we say the particular patient is not diabetes so this is one particular feature there are many features but this is one of your promising feature that tells whether the particular patient is diabetes or not so you develop a prediction whether the particular person is diabetes or not or they've got a heart disease or not yes thank you thank you for the two professors who have given a beautiful answer hands off to you right and same way you can apply the prediction model all right into different applications that he could see in specific today in specific today our domain is healthcare Right, that minus okay. So now you're able to understand. I gave an example of student academic evaluation, like how you see the student in semester one, how the students they travel back, and how they are behaving in semester four, how they will be into semester eight, right? So using the historical data as a faculty with your experience to learn the students, you find the patterns of it and you generate accurate predictions from it. Like it finds what are the things that comes when you come to healthcare. The correlations, right? The, for example, if I'm going to take diabetes, right? The sugar level in the blood before fasting and after fasting has got highest correlation towards the target value, whether the particular patient is diabetic or not. 
And in addition, you have the name of the patient, you have the age of a patient, right? Whether they have a family history, whether the father, mother, or diabetes, or these are some of the features which tries to correlate. But the strong correlation is that the particular feature which is strongly correlated to find um, the particular patient has got a disease or not. For example, if you are going to take academics, how the student, uh, 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 what are the marks achieved by the students in the internals has got a strong correlation towards the end semester whether the student will pass or fail. All right. So here the, the, the skeleton is going to be the same. If you're going to give a healthcare data set, then it's going to be healthcare analytics. If you're going to give sales data set, whether the sales is going to be won or lost. Right, the skeleton is more important in analytics. Right, we are going to see about analytics and how are you going to analyze the data, what are the parameters that's more important. Right, in specific, when you take healthcare, association of symptoms, right, like, um, what are the symptoms for COVID because COVID became an international syllabus? What are the symptoms of COVID, corona, COVID, whatever it is? Feel free to unmute and answer. I don't know how many of you uh, in the last two years have got COVID and you have recovered. If you ask me, yes, in April, no. April. Yes. Most pain symptoms are cold, cough, fever. Cold, body cough. Pain. Taste. Body pain, headache. Yeah. For some, the taste buds goes, right? You were not able to yes. figure out the taste. Even in, uh, last Nadus April 21, 20 or 21 April, even we, myself and my husband, we suffered with uh, Corona, but the grace of God, God helps us to help us to uh, survive and sustain things, right? And uh, for me, symptoms and my husband's symptoms was very different. For me, I lost the entire taste, but I took a rock salt and I was trying to rub on my tongue. Even that I was not able to find. So the symptoms, symptoms has got a strong correlation to detect whether the particular patient has got the particular uh, disease or not a particular disease or not to make uh, meaningful predictions and to make meaningful predictions. So predictive analytics plays an important role in improving the patient's care, right? Especially in chronic disease uh, uh, management system, right? And uh, also the effect of supply chain. What was very deficient? What was deficient during COVID time? Ma'am, uh, pharmacy, uh, medicine. uh, medicines. Medicines and more importantly? Sanitizer. Uh, okay. Other one? What was more demanding? Yes, exactly said. Exactly said. Hands off to you. Exactly said. Right? Uh, there was a huge demand for oxygen. We were not able to know whether they've got oxygen or not. Right? So that also you can work with analytics. What is your need of the patient? How much is the inventory that analytics and how much is the flow of the medicine also could be done? Right? And population health management is becoming an experiencing uh, popular topic in predictive analytics, right? And also, how do you prevent disease, right? Now, they say different, different kinds of diseases, all right? And how to prevent and how it is even on a geological, geospatial data. I don't know anybody has worked on geospatial data. That will give you a geographical view in which area you would have seen in your news channels, right? Um, which country has got high... Uh, infection of COVID, right? that analytics also could be done. And also it's available onto my YouTube channel about COVID data analytics, right? So with data science, the hospital can predict the duration of patient's health, 
right? And provide preventive measures and start an early treatment that will assist in reducing the risk further of the patient. So with these analytics, we'll know if this and if this kind of symptoms were there, how long did the patient survive, which medicine really worked for the previous patient, and you would be able to uh, help to survive the patient very quickly in the future generation. Right? Predictive analytics plays also a vital role, like how much oxygen is needed. Like there was a real high on the need for uh, oxygen level, right? Oxygen need, right? And um, we visited AMTS, right? Andhra Medtech. Anybody, if you get time, it's really a wonderful place, for, especially for faculties, for startups, for students. They have their own invention, innovation. They could be evaluated. It could be calibrated. There, there we saw a, a new, like a set of companies were developing oxygen concentrators, right? That helps for the oxygen level when there was real demand of oxygen was not available for them and the logistics supply in iit mandi right they developed artificial intelligence based monitoring applications for covid 19 patients you know when people get covid 19 they were isolated they went to different place so in addition to their current management and unbreachable mobile phone platform non-covid mobile patients can see how the patients are there in their uh, hospitals or in their workplaces using this application like right? iit mandi students and the professors develop over there what are the domains, right? We're now coming into the domains. What are the domains data science and healthcare could be done? Like a genetics and genomics, right? Um, and for the drug discovery, right? And for predictive analytics of disease. And we can also move in for image analytics, right? And now uh, currently, like students from uh, one university stay up for a course. On image and then the next one data analytics online internship is going on for students right what are the images like listen carefully what are the types of images and healthcare you can use it for evaluation what are the images you have in healthcare scans. yeah what CT are the scans scan. yeah ct scan yeah. Ultrasound. Ultrasound. Images. Yes, ultrasound images. MRI. MRI. PET scan. X rays. Yeah. X, X rays. All right. So you can, yeah. we have uh, like a, like this company that I wasn't in engineering college for a decade. Like you being a professor and head in various colleges as said by everybody during the interaction. And 2017, I started my own research organization, which is Computation Intelligence Research Foundation. Here we basically have four pillars. One is research, development, education, and training, right? So research, development, education, and training. We train like faculty, students, corporates onto the technology, what is there of their demand. And here I have a couple of students and researchers have taken a huge data sets on images and helped to develop their own analytics, right? So uh, you can now you are able to say what are the different and also there were uh, two vaccinations, right? What are the two vaccinations? COVID shield and Covaxin, right? COVID shield and Covaxin. So COVID shield, uh, uh, they say it is totally developed using an algorithm which finds which drugs could be added that could prevent uh, infecting a particular patient. I'm not saying about Covaxin, but COVID shield. All right, and then um, virtual assistants. How many of you have experienced this during the COVID? Like we had doctors coming online and evaluating. Anybody has experienced it during COVID time? Yes, please, nobody has experienced. Or have you heard about it? Everybody is silent. Yeah, you have heard about it, right? So, thank you. I don't know, I couldn't see your name who was speaking. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> All right. And um, so, the, even that paid a way for data analysis to figure out 
whether um, uh, the they were not able, they were not traveling but being at their home they were able to evaluate whether the particular what is the symptoms of the patient now they need to recover this and uh, so for ritual assistance for data management right how have you seen the graph of covid analysis right so you'll be able to know about it so the need for data science in healthcare industry so today we are seeing about the predictive analytics. I told you, right, that IIT Mandi, they developed an artificial intelligence among based device, right, so that they could figure out, so that they could um, find out whether uh, the patient, how are they moving inside their ICU or in their room. And data science for genomics, genetics, and for medical imaging, you have given a lot of, uh, uh, you have given, um, a uh, lot of uh, examples like x-rays, PET scans, um, CD scan, or whatever it is, ultrasound, and also providing virtual assistance, tracking and preventing and drug discovery with data science. So providers who use predictive modeling are telling the following clinical charges. Right? 27 are predicting readmissions, right? There's a survey made, right? And whether they're finding whether the patient will be readmitted or once they are healed, they were going on. And 18% are predicting whether the patient is getting deteriorated, right? There was a very big, uh, I don't know, it's a real time. Like he's an emergency doctor in US, right? He is also a TEDx speaker. You can figure it out afterwards. So he he just saw he's into the emergency ward. Like one woman came, he just predicted it seems that she is recovering and she was sent home in the morning and then evening she was readmitted into another ward he was not ever offered. The following day she passed away. And he's a very pro pro prominent doctor and very, very successful emergency physician. And he was very upset after hearing this news. And during a, during a very big talk, he admitted maybe a, he admitted, yes, it is for or even prior diagnosing the particular uh, patient. And that and he became extra sure after the next time when he started uh, treating the patient. Like using this predictive analytics, 18 person are predicting whether the patient is going to deteriorate or he's going to survive. 27 are pred predicting the specifics, right? And 10% are predicting the general health patients and 18% are finalizing the decisions, what could be the final decision of it, right? Any doubts till now? Somebody's mic is on. Yes. Any doubts till now? Yeah, um, you are able to follow? Yes? Yes. Yes, yes thank yes, you. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, Professor Devrat, sir, mic is on. I don't know. Could be by mistake or he has got a doubt. Okay. Um, All right. All right. So there are four kinds of analytics, right? Uh, the first is the descriptive analytics. The second, the step higher is the diagnostic analytics. And the third step is the predictive analytics. And step four is prospective analytics, right? Very first step is descriptive analytics. So when you get a fever, or you and me, we get a fever, right? You go to the doctor, and what is the question the doctor will ask you first? Can one of you say? The doctor doesn't know. When you go to a doctor, what is the first question the doctor will ask you? What are the and symptoms? Symptoms. He'll ask, what happened? Right? What happened? What are the symptoms you have? You've got cold, cough. Then you started narrating to the doctor. I've got headache, I've got sneezing, I've got cold, I've got body pain, and whatever you experience, you share to the doctor. So you are telling, answering, you're responding to this question called, what happened? 
All right, what happened? So that is scholars descriptive analytics. When you take data set, you need to analyze what does this data set about? And you need to have a lot of visualization like line graph, bar plot, violin plot, like he, whatever it is, trying to understand what this data is. For example, right, for example, how many patients went to hospital last week? These are the questions because you already have a data and from the data you're going to infer details. That is descriptive analytics. Very simple. It answers the question what happened. So you go to the doctor, you tell to the doctor what is your uh, symptoms and you tell what what is your what how do you feel whether you got fever, cold, or cough, or body pain or whatever it is, X, Y, Z. And then what is the next step the doctor will do? What is the next step the doctor will do? You go to an experienced doctor or you go to a very new doctor? You go to a fresh doctor or go to your experienced doctor? Doctor. Why do you go to an experienced doctor? Because he can identify the disease very fast. Ah, he can identify the disease very fast. Okay, so you go to an experienced doctor. So once you tell him what is the disease or what are the symptoms you have, what do the doctor say? Those who have not answered, can you answer, please? What do the doctors say? You go to doctor, you explain this descriptive analysis. This is for understanding the concept and giving you this example. All right. What do the doctors say after you tell whatever is your uh, sufferings? And then what does he say? They missed few options. You say this could be this, this. Maybe can you take some tests and come yeah. and confirm this? Thank you. So, like Professor Arun said, he would tell maybe it could be typhoid, it could be malaria. I'm not telling by the symptoms he will say, but in 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 um, but to rule out things, let's go have a uh, test. Like during COVID, even when we got affected, we were asked to take a CT scan, right? The chest CT scan. So it it also happens, right? So they go to the doctor and the doctor says, what is to be done, right? And he, he from his diagnosis, he will come to a conclusion. But rather to rule out, to be very extra sure, uh, he will tell, okay, you take this uh, diagnosis and come. Then it goes to the whatever diagnosis and the diagnosis report comes. Comes. The same thing happens here. The first you describe your descriptive analytics. Second, diagnostic. Why did this patient go to hospital? Right? So these are things you're going to analyze from a data set. During the end of the session, I try to uh, run um, a sample code and show to you how it works. Right? And after diagnosis, he will know. He will predict. The next step of the analytics is predictive analytics. He will know what is the cause. After the diagnosis, the doctor will know what is the fever or what is the disease the particular patient is being uh, suffering through. Right? What are the symptoms? And he, now he'll say, right, this is, this, this is your disease and these are some precautions you have to do. It. So he predicts whether the particular patient has got particular disease or not. All right, it could be typhoid or it is malaria or it is dengue or normal viral fever or it's a normal fever, whatever it is. Okay, after he detects, after he predicts, what's the doctor do after which? What does doctor do post which? He prescribe the drugs. Uh, he will write on, on a prescription and I'll say, and he'll say, these are the diets that you need to take, all right, and uh, you need to be very careful, right, and he used to give so many uh, instructions, so not, and to inform it, to prevent, it is not going to happen furthermore, or to reduce the um, spread of the disease, right, so that is called a prescription, he writes prospect. A prescription. So this we say to be prospective analysis. Which patient will go to hospital next day? These patients should get extra treatment to prevent hospitalization. This is the hint side. 
inside and four side all right so when you take the data analytics also this is very very important first step on data analytics is a skeleton if you give a healthcare data, you get a healthcare analytics. If you give a sales data, you get a sales and analytics a prediction model. If you're going to give your students academics value, then you're going to get the academics prediction system. But the skeleton is the same. And these are the primarily four steps. And each step will be going like one step ahead, ahead, ahead. That will help you to develop an analytics model. So the first is a descriptive analytics, the second is a diagnostic analytics, third is a predictive analytics, and fourth is your prospective analytics. What has happened in predictive analytics? What would happen in the future based on the previous trends and patterns, whether he's going to be nowadays, even they find whether the patient could be a pre-diabetic or also not, right? And the, what, what should they do to get prevented? Prospective analytics, right? Are you able to understand all the four kinds of analytics, four types of analytics? If you are able to understand it clearly, type on, uh, click on raise hands. I don't know how many of you are really following through it because it's an online session. The four analytics, they, I just gave you an example to make you uh, very strong on the concept. If you are able to understand, click raise hands. If you are not able to understand, you, do, you need not click right hands. Yes, yes, I could get only from three, four, five, six. I don't know, some of you are responding, some not responding. I don't know how many of you are listening. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've got response from six, seven. Now you can lower your hands. Okay. Uh, now let me know anybody has got doubts. Now everybody lower your hands. Now if you have got doubts, you can click raise hands. Those have raised hands, you can lower your hands. If you have got doubts, click raise hands and unmute and ask a question. Anybody has got doubts? No doubts. Some of them are neutral. Understood? No answer. Whether you have got doubts, even for that, I'm not getting an answer. Okay, thank you. All right. So, when you come into this analytics, you are going to learn the patterns of data. With this word, you keep strong in your mind learning the data patterns all right so when you take both machine learning and deep learning they discover patterns in data but they involve dramatically different techniques right both they are going to find the patterns of the data right even when you find friends right in our workplace or imagine in your first day of a school and then you come on to the last day of your schoolings you have got a best friends right and then in a college time, in a workplace, right? Somebody whom you like, whose character you like, whose behavior you like, you become friends with them. For example, the coordinator of the session is uh, Professor Arivod Imam, right? We, uh, she was into, uh, we both were in Tana University, like uh, we, were, uh, we were doing a, a research, right? We had these students, we were there at that time, like, uh, when I was coming, when I was about to complete, and she was a junior, and that is where our, our relationship or our friendship started blooming. Those who like, we get ourselves as friends, right? So that's the behavior, and that that's we started was long ago in 2009 or 10, I don't remember, right? And then our journey continues for this past 12 years, right? So here, like that. You discover the patterns, whose behavior you like, then you try to have a friendship with them. Same thing in both machine learning and deep learning. You discover the patterns in data, but they involve different techniques. Let's see what are the techniques. Both look like same, but they involve differently. In machine learning and deep learning, right, they are both, they are forms of artificial intelligence, right? When you take, listen carefully now, 
Artificial intelligence is a big set. A subset of artificial intelligence is machine learning. A subset of machine learning is deep learning. I repeat, the entire set is artificial intelligence. A subset of artificial intelligence is machine learning. And a subset of machine learning is deep learning. Hope you are able to follow it, right? Both are forms of artificial intelligence because that's the parent, right? Deep learning is a specific kind of machine learning. In both machine learning and deep learning techniques, right, we are going to have two things. One is a training data, other is a testing data, and it goes through a prediction model that finds which, which model fits the best, which model fits the best. You've got training data, you've got your testing data. So how will you develop a machine learning model or how will you develop a predictive machine learning model? The first step in what? First, you have to prepare your data. Data are more important. Only if your data are good, then your model will be good. If your data are not good, then your model will not be good. Okay, if I give you an example, um, when you're going to cook a food, okay, you're going to cook a food. Maybe it could be biryani. All right, or it could be sambar rice or sambar or whatever it is. To have a good taste of a food, what is more important? Yes, sir. You're going to answer? Ingredients. Ingredients. What, are, what ingredients? The quality of the ingredients is very important. If the quality of the ingredients is good, then naturally, if you're going to follow the correct procedures to make biryani, then it, the biryani is going to taste awesome. All right. So the quality of the ingredients and the correct proportion is very, very important. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> the quality of the ingredients very important, all right, to get a good food. Same way, whatever you are, if you are even an expert in data analytics, <coughs> and um, more importantly, the data that you're going to use for testing and training will help us will help us uh, to figure out uh, what uh, what is the machine learning model that we're going to develop. All right. So coming into this, first your data set, right? That is where you need to work. That is where you need to work a benchmark data set, right? You have to take a benchmark data set. In UCI machine learning repository, you will have your benchmark data set, right? You will have your benchmark data set. Okay, and from there we will be taking, see, whatever you teach well, whether the students are going to learn or they are receptive only, if the ingredients of the students is good only, then you will be able to get good output, right? The same thing happens, say the data set is good, then only your ML model will be really, really, really good, right? So from which you, in your data set, you get an entire data and which in feature engineering you are going to take, what are the features which is getting very, very strongly correlated towards your target variable for your predictive model, right? And you can drop other features, right? you can drop the other features. And next step, you model it using your ML algorithm. There are hundreds and thousands and thousands of algorithms that are available and you can take out which algorithm you really need to work and that gives you the best accuracy. So these are the four steps. If you're making a note, you can make a profit. For say, for example, I don't know how many of you have this habit of seeing your climate predictions. 
Okay, I hope yeah, you are from Chennai and some I am from Chennai, some of you are from Hello or even from different places, right? So from the satellite, for an example, see today in Chennai, they say it's 32 degrees Celsius and you feel like 37. All right, the visibility and inter humidity, and then we find out how it is going to be in the night. All right, and then eventually, if you're going to see the monthly, right? You're able to see my screen, everybody. You're able to see my screen. Can one of you unmute? Yeah, yeah thank you. Yes, yeah, and now you can see I we are in September 24. But still, see, we have just predicted what kind of, what would be the temperature for in our next week and also the next month and what was predicted, what was low and what was the temperature of it. And also I can see how it is going to be in October. All right. Can you see? How is the climate? So this is an example of prediction systems. So they take the data from the satellite right? and then they will take only the features, only those columns which are strongly correlated. There will be hundreds and thousands of rows that will be getting from the satellite. But only the columns which has got a strong correlation to predict, listen carefully, to predict my temperature in the fall days, only those columns will be taken. That's an example for feature engineering. Say, for example, at VI to Vendor, you have a student database where it will contain the name of the student, the roll number of the student, the father name, the mother name, the other number, the blood group, the address. Then, say, for example, if they are in their semester, you have two internals and the semester, the second internals, the third, second semester internals, and the second semester marks the third semester internals, right? So, if I'm going to find how the student is going to learn whether he is going to pass out an end semester i literally need only the column of the student row number and the marks they fetch other than these other number blood group the email id the phone number the father occupation mother occupation father name mother name has nowhere has got a correlation towards my entire whether the student is going to pass or not so i will drop all these columns from my database if i'm going to develop an academic uh, predictions him. Then I'll take the roll number of the student and figure it out if this pattern of the marks are like this, whether the student will pass an end semester or not. All right. Say, for example, if I want to understand the behavior of the student, then I need the father, father's occupation, from which area, what was he doing, how was he responding in the class, whether he's a good attendance in the class, he's responding, is he submitting assignments. That will help me to figure out my behavioral model. That time, this mark is not going to play a vital role. So what is your business understanding is very important for your feature engineering. And then we'll move on to this, right? So if I'm going to take a disease data set, I'll be splitting my data set into training data and onto my testing data. In my training data, I'll be working with set of algorithms. For example, I'll give a name-based random forest and decision tree. And I'll give my testing. And I develop my model and see my performance, performance metrics and evaluate whether for a new patient, if I'm going to give my data, it will tell me whether the patient is a diseased patient or a non-diseased patient. All right. See, now listen, what do you have in your training data? Say, for example, I'm going to have a list of features and one target variable that will say whether the particular patient has got disease or not. All right. And... And in my training, I'll have my data and also my target. Okay. And in my testing data, I'll have only my features, but I'll not have my target. Having learned from this model, my testing data will predict one predictive value. And I will compare the predictive value with my already existing target variable. If everything is going to match closely, then I get 100% accuracy. If not, then I'll get lesser percent accuracy. Example, when you take class to, to the students, you will tell for this question, this is your answer. For example, Max, this is the question and this is how you have to solve in the problem. 
but when the student go for the exam that's a testing phase if you give only the question you don't give them the answer the student will write their own answer and the evaluators will evaluate and give you marks if the student is going to give correct answers for all the question he gets 100 out of 100 he is not going to give correct answers for the question then he gets less number of marks all right it's a practical application just to understand the concept. Here you have got the feature and the target. Here you have only the feature. The predictive model will give the target and then you compare both. And then you'll be comparing both. All right. Yes. Able to understand. Now we are going into the classification, right? Yeah, well, because our today's topic is predictive healthcare analytics. So here you're going to predict whether the particular patient there is going to be a target variable and exist your features and why is the target, for example. All right. So labeled data is used to train a classifier. Labeled data means you know what is the target variable, and the target variable is available on your is available on your data set it's available on your data set so before moving this on to right Let me show you a simple demo. I'm using this tool called colab.research.google.com. I'm just showing you a data set that I told you, right? You can take the benchmark data set from UCI machine learning repository. Here you have got lots of data set, lot of data set, right? So see so you can see a data set for heart disease. So here you have got T not three rows and 75 columns. And you have got like this kind of data set. It's from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. See, it is uh, from this uh, uh, university has given it. And who's the donor? We have got 569 rows and 32 columns. It was donated in the year 1990. So many of them have used. So here you can see uh, these are the uh, features, right? These are the features, the radius texture and the diagnostics malignant means if the patient's cancer is benign the patient this is my target variable this is my y and these are all my x these are my features right and um, same way here i'm taking chronic uh, uh, kidney disease right these are some packages i'm using like pandas, numpy, seaborn, pandas for data analysis, numpy for numerical pattern, matplotlib for data visualization, the higher level data visualization is seaborn and plotly, right? And I have my data set on my Google Drive. So I'm trying to mount my Google Drive. I'm mounting my Google Drive.
Okay, yeah, it's mounted. So this is my data set. Okay, I'll show you the data set. So the ID and the age of the patient, the BP level, and albumin, and all the data, right? And I've taken it that he has got a chronic kidney disease patient or not. You can see here chronic kidney. So you can see here, this is the data set that I've taken. Demonstration, can you see? This can be collected from the hospital for two months of period. 400 instance, 25 attributes, missing values are there. It was donated in the year 2015. It's from Madurai, Karaikudi. Right, it's from Karaikudi, Abala Hospital. This was the doctor who gave it. And this is a research scholar, Jaren was a research scholar. And uh, this is how they've done. So BP specifies the blood pressure, the specific gravity, right? Albumin, this is all for the kidney disease, the sugar level, RBC, the first cells, the first cell clumps, bacteria, blood glucose random, blood urea, the serum creatinine, right? The sodium, the potassium, the hemoglobin, and everything. And there is a class. This is my target variable. It will say whether the patient is a, if it is going to be a patient, then it's a chronic kidney disease. Otherwise, no, not a chronic kidney disease patient. All right? And I could see, as I showed you, the 400 rows. You can see here the 400 rows. The ID, I don't want. Already, I have an ID for pandas. So I'm dropping my ID, right? I'm going to drop my ID and I'm replacing my column name with the real name so that I will try to understand well. So uh, understand my data as well, right? So these are all my data, right? And then this is a descriptive analytics. I told you about what is about the data. In descriptive analytics, it will take only the columns that have uh, numerical values, but not um, sorry, but not uh, non-numerical values. So only columns that have numerical values, it will be calculated. So the minimum age is two, and the maximum age is twenty in this data set. And right, blood pressure is minimum fifteen, right? Mean. And your maximum is 180 is that pressure, right? And you can see about the albumin, the creatine, the value which is less, and that's more. All right. You can find the normal serum creatine level. Okay, what is a normal serum creatine level? For men, it should be 74 to 1.5, and for women. Right, 0 0.5 to 1.04 ml. So here they will give like zero creatine. But here you can see what is your 0 0.4 was the minimum and the maximum is 391. I don't know. It's too high, right? So or is the hemoglobin level? You know, should be 12, right? And here it computes your mean. What is 50 percent? The maximum is 90, minimum, maximum. Can, uh, this is standard deviation. The count. Can you see there are missing values? In age, it is 391. Totally, we had 400. My rows are. But you have a lot of missing values here. Can one of it tell what is 50%? You have got minimum, maximum. What would be 50%? It is more. Okay. It is more. Right. And info will take, give me the information about it. What kind of seeds float is jack, right? I'm converting it to be numeric, converting necessary columns to be numeric. White blood cells, red blood cells, and packed cell volume. And now I can say it is also changed to be as float. Before it was object, 
okay i'm now i'm going to extract my categorical columns categorical columns are columns that have uh, strings and numericals which has integer and float so what are the unique values so nan here you can see it as nan it stands for not a number which means you have got missing values and we need to curate it isn't okay we need to i'm taking the first cells the first cell clumps right or dot class of the whether there is a, a chronic kidney disease or not chronic kidney disease patient and i'm replacing my incorrect value can you see here something slash t some junk values are there so using my dictionaries if it is slash t you know i'm going to replace with uh, no yes with yes right and replace t you no know, for the different columns and i'm again going to map my classes right chronic means no and not a chronic means one right if it is disease it is zero not a disease i'm going to make it one right and uh, um, again i've got the columns and may have my columns as zeros and ones right now i'm going to check my numerical features right so how many numer num numerical feature distributions and i'm pl pl i'm planting a plotting a distribution plot right i'm plotting a distribution plot so age and density the blood pressure and the density specific gravity so i can see the age is zero and up to 100 right and the density of the blood sugar blood urea serum creatinine level all right and the density of the hemoglobin almost right almost and then you know this is my distribution plot this is my Plot. I'm trying to by using my C one. I'm plotting my list plot for my numerical columns. Okay, now going to my categorical columns. I'm trying to plot my count plot. Okay, count plot. So how many red blood cells normal or normal? Persons normal or normal? Persons clumps and the bacteria present. The appetite. And so how many with the disease? How many without disease? Zero means. We have got chronic kidney disease in the entire data set. So, two fifty out of four hundred, two fifty has got with the disease, and one fifty has got data without disease. So, two fifty plus one fifty, it comes to four hundred is your rows, right? I told you right in the initial part of it, you need to have a correlation. You remember I told you about uh, uh, correlations, right? So here to find the correlation, uh, we are going in for the heat map. We are going for the heat map. There are different relations available: Pearson's correlation, Spearman correlation, and Kendall's correlation. Right? And um, uh, default is Pearson's correlation. Default is Pearson's correlation. Okay. Uh, till now, whether you are able to understand how are you taking the data set and how are you loading into the just to understand the concept because this is not a hands-on session, right? And how do you visualize it and able to understand the kidney data set? If you're able to understand what we have discussed now, you can click raise hands. So, what is the software which you used? I'm using Colab. Colab. Oh, okay. All right, able to synthesis how the data sets have been taken. One of the most active uh, participant today is Professor Arun. I don't know what others. Yes, Sasi Kalan must understand. If you have understood the concepts seen till now, you can click raise hands. Only two have understood. What about others? You are all there with me, or you just connected the computer or your system and you started doing your own work? I don't know. Able, to, uh, thank you, Nivedita. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Satyamurthy sir. Shakti, Doctor Shakti, body well, ma'am. Thank you. I don't know, ma'am or sir. I'm sorry. Thank you, professors. One, two, three, four, five. What about others, other than this five? Okay. 
Okay. All right. So, so those explore three, and there are two things that we need to understand, right? When it comes to uh, machine learning, right? You have got your unsupervised learning and your supervised learning. Right? In unsupervised learning, you give your input data, but you don't give a target. Rather, when I took my data set now, right? I took about the kidney data set, right? So, in kidney data set, I have my class is my target variable. So, that is my label whether this particular patient has got a kidney disease or not a kidney disease, right? And if I have a target, that is my target, whether the presence or absence, right? So, we develop a predictive model based on the input and output. And if the uh, uh, target is not continuous, right? Here, the target is not continuous. The reason behind is that only yes or no, right? If I am going to take time to the cancer data set, like no cancer or level 1 cancer, level 2 cancer, level 3 cancer, level... So, that goes for multi-class classification algorithm. Right. So when it is like discrete values like this, my target, listen very carefully, my target or my labeled column has got discrete value and go, I go on for classification. But rather when my target is a continuously changed in variables, for example, the house pricing, okay, when you buy a house, right, or you buy a house or a land, right, whether it is going to be the same every year or it is going to be changing. Or is it going to change from area to area? Is it going to be same or is it going to be changing? Can I get a response from you, please? If I'm going to get a plot or if I'm going to buy a house. Yes, please. Yeah, it is going to change and in specific, it is going to change for each and every row. Like if I am going to get it in Ayanavaram, what would be the price? If I am going to get it in Ananagar, what about if I am going to get it at Kotrubaram, the same area, what would be the price, right? If it is going to be in Wanderur, what would be the price? If it is going to be older, what would be the price? Easier, what would be the price? When you, That's my target. My target is my house price. But listen very carefully, when my target is going to be a continuously changing variable, then I will apply regression algorithm. But when my target is discrete like yes or no, or like 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, right, which is not continually changing, then I will apply classification algorithm. All right, able to understand where do you apply classification, where do you apply progression. But when you come into clustering, unsupervised learning, you will not have a target. You will have to cluster what are the different types of content available. You group based on your input data. You don't have a target. Right? Supervised learning is like students come to you. To college, they sit and they learn, you train them and you know whether the student is going to pass or not. Unsupervised is learning courses like a respondents or distance education where you don't know who is your professor much and your professor also will not and will not know whether you, you, you will pass in the final exam or not. Able to get the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. Right? In supervised learning, the best example for classification is whether if these parameters are not there, whether the particular disease is present or not. If the marks of the student is there, whether the student will pass or fail. If sales is like this, whether the sale is going to be won or lost. All right. And uh, regression is continuously changing, like drug response, which is totally continuously changing, the house prices, the plot prices. But the target price is a continuous change variable, so you go on for regression. Like gold prices, it's not going to be the same every day. But stock, stock prediction, stock prediction, you go on for regressions, right? You go on for regression. Mm -hmm. See, unsupervised, you don't have a target. Okay, let me ask you a question. How many of you go to mall? Mall. I want one of you to unmute and uh, give me a response to this. I don't want to have silent listeners in the session, right? How many of you have gone to a mall? 
any mall i don't know in in vit or in vellore you have got malls how many of you have visited malls yes okay, someone is unmuting yes please nobody has visited malls or you all don't want to give an answer I'm um, okay. Everyone has visited ma'am. Hmm. Okay. I I'm trying to find who's speaking. Yes, Sasi Kanna ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So when you go for mall, for what purpose people generally go to mall? For spend the time window shopping. For window shopping, that's one sector. Second, if we go for food right for food courts how many of you go for food courts i don't know we go for mall for food courts what are the other things that we go for mall window shopping food courts then uh, yes ma'am you can say tell and supposingly if you have kids we all will go to the mall for the fun city or game area and then some college students right they don't have anything to buy they don't want to have food just for past time they go all right somehow two things to shop and also to play right some just go and come for time pass for get together some go for a uh, play area so these are different sectors you don't have a particular target like a disease whether the disease is present or not like when you don't have a particular target okay and then for those kind of applications we generally go on for clustering algorithm we generally go on for clustering algorithm all right we go for clustering algorithm so here in supervised learning i give you my data i know my target is apple so it will be split in between data set and my testing data set training and what is my output and that is given to the algorithm so in the algorithm it will learn your data patterns right in your algorithm it will try to find the data patterns and then i will be processing it and in my model trained model i'll be giving my testing data set like i have trained it with the red apple right in my testing data set i am trying to give the green apple all right and then seeing its features my ml algorithm will say it is an apple it is an apple all right this is supervised you know what is the desired output i want you all to focus this desired output all right but in unsupervised learning you don't know what is your output i am going to give apples bananas and mangoes as my input i don't know unknown output no training data it tries to figure out the pattern and predicts an algorithm them and find there are basically three clusters like one is an apple one is a banana one is a mango same example of customers going to the mall one is for shopping one is for food court one is for fun city one is for cinema or whatever it is they go on for it one between two clusters all right so in supervised learning your input data is labeled here your input data is unlabeled here users use the training data set in unsupervised just like that you use your data set there is no training testing because you don't have a target right this is basically used for prediction and this is used for analysis the supervised learning comes under classification and regression unsupervised learning we go on for clustering density estimation and dimensionality reduction all right so exploratory data analysis is very important right exploratory the data analysis is very 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 important all right so how do you analyze your data that's your descriptive analytics understand what is this data all about okay that they would also say i balling the data i balling the data right to get better understanding so i told you in major eda we are going to have a descriptive analytics i showed you right in the kidney data set like dot describe a function you get the mean the 50% is the mode uh, the median and the mode and the standard deviation the count of values everything
and now we are going into data visualization where you've got the heat maps to find the correlation between different values and different plots right and your shaping of it right what are the different plots that you could have for that we are going to go for python data analysis library that's very fast like whatever is my data I and i have to take in a csv data but when i load it into my pandas the data type inside my pandas will be data frame i can also load my excel file as a data set right i can also use my hdf anybody has worked on a data analytics hadoop anybody has worked on hadoop anybody here yes i pass on the chat or you can unmute and also speak all right all right and um, so when you like hadoop is used by facebook uh, uber right and many many companies right they use uh, big data analytics using hadoop where it uses hdfs which stands for hadoop distributed file system which stands for hadoop distributed file system and if i have my data on my hadoop system also i'll be able to take it right i'll be able to uh, take it and load it into it so it's very easy you can take from csv excel from html text files but whatever it is when you take into my pandas it will be data frame it will be of type data frame i can show you i've got df here right so if i'm going to find type of df you can see the type of data is a data frame can you see here it is data frame but what is my data set that i have taken see the csv file comma separated file but once i load it into my pandas it converts to be a data frame all right this is a heat map I'm giving SNS dot heat map are not equal to two like the after decimal points like line with this two and color is like gray line color I'm giving and for sure. Can you see age is always strongly related to age, right? So my objective is how it is related to the class. These are my features like age, blood pressure. These are my features and this is my target. Only look on to this curve. When it is negative, it is not strongly correlated. When it is positive, then it is strongly correlated. Right? And also, I am trying to have like violin plot, px dot violin of to my on my x-axis class and my y-axis, what are the columns that I am going to give in this function and kde I am using for face it, gray set graph, grid graph, okay, and see, and for scatter plot, I'll show you some examples. I'm just taking red blood cell count. I can see people with the disease, what is the value of red blood cells, can you see? People without disease, the value is four. But when people have got disease, you can see the value is less. So this is one of an influencing factor to figure out whether the particular patient has got the disease or not. Okay, uh, the, like RBC, I'm trying to do my white blood cells. Here also you can see. Okay, and also I'm trying to plot my KDE, kernel density estimate. Right, for class zero, you can see the value is higher. And class zero is so class zeros are one when people have got the disease, right? Same thing. And also I can time to plot scatter plot. On my x-axis, I'm going to take hemoglobin. On y-axis, I'm take back to cell volume. You can see here. When the disease is there, the hemoglobin level is very less. When the disease is not there, the hemoglobin level is small. So class 0 is people with disease and class 1 is people with a disease. So these, this is what is your description analytics, which will help you to really find out right, how really, what are the factors which are influencing after you uh, start uh, finding out your heat maps, right? Your heat maps.
the specific gravity. So without disease, the value of specific gravity of pack cell volume is higher. People with the disease have got lesser uh, packed cell volume. All right. Am I going to find whether there is any uh, missing values? Yes, there are missing values available. Right? It's null dot sum of. Okay, will tell me so many missing values. So I'm going to fill my missing values. Right? With the different imputation methodology with the random values. Or I can also use mean, median, mode. Right? Now I don't have any missing values. Then I need to convert my categorical values to numerical values, right? Converting my categorical, that is what I'm using my label encoder here to convert my categorical values into numerical values. Then now you could see here, I because we want to develop a machine learning algorithm, you, you, would, you should not have any uh, new, uh, strings objects. So I'm splitting my, what is my target? My target is my class. My, that's my target, others are features. Here I'm splitting my data, train and target train. And I'm just using one algorithm here, a random forest algorithm. And I'm trying to get in training, what is my accuracy? In testing, I'm getting 98%. That's a good accuracy. Only two filter, two fields are uh, predicted improperly and like precision recall f1 score or how many true positive and true negative what are false positive and false negative parameters are taken this is my performance metric. so first i take my data that's my data engineering step one step two is my feature engineering what are the features and third step i'm trying to develop my machine learning model here i'm just using an algorithm all right and then these are the performance metrics all right precision read how much it is true how much is this false all right able to understand till now yes no no yes can you unmute and speak please hello i hope you're all there yeah thank you yes. yeah able to understand the concept of machine learning and data analytics and where do you apply classification where do you apply clustering and regression all right i'll just give a gist of what we do at cirf and uh, uh, and then we'll have a few minutes uh, for discussions or, or any queries that you have, you could ask. All right. Um, I hope you will be able to see in my screen. You are able to see my slide, please? Yes, thank you. I hope the session would have been useful for you, for those who are new to understand the concepts of data analytics, machine learning, deep learning, classification, clustering, and regression. And I showed you a demonstration of uh, kidney disease, right? How do you evaluate it and how do you develop? So this is our uh, concern, right? Which is company's name is Computational Intelligence Research Foundation right and um, our vision is to contribute nation building through innovative mentoring and research driven transformation so we mentor uh, like yeah, like other other uh, institutions you can see only internships for students right here we provide internship for faculties too that's something very unique because i strongly believe once a teacher is equipped on the digital tools or the upcoming then through the faculty thousands and thousands of students will be trained throughout their own career so we provide faculty internship as per your choice and and it will be like hands-on we have like 20 hour session online and also an offline mode and uh, through innovative mentoring things like what is your creativity and people could come and could develop their research ideas with us right 
and CIF is a Section 8 company. We have registered under Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Government of India. And we are a 12 year NGO DARPAN certified company. I'm Dr. Doreen Robin, as uh, introduced. I'm basically a data scientist, keynote speaker, an MLDL trainer for corporates. Just we completed my corporate training for an MNC of 10 years plus, uh, to five to 10 years plus uh, uh, experienced uh, few professionals on data engineering. Like previously, I was went to engineering colleges and, and published a couple of papers. And also probably in November, we'll have a two days workshop online for how to use LaTeX to write good journal papers, right? And if you're interested, you could get in contact. I'll share my contact details, or you can get it from my volley too. Right. And uh, myself and my husband, we are Goodwill Ambassadors for Plastic Free Tamil Nadu. And in every session, I do tell this kindly avoid the use of single use plastic, right? So that you will give a good environment to the uh, generation coming. Plastics are very hazardous, especially single use plastics, right? And the next director is my husband, and he's uh, Dr. C. R. N. Robin. He is working as a professor and dean at uh, Sairam Engineering College, right? Uh, he's a research supervisor and an executive, right? And our objective we are research driven, focused on providing learning and development. We provide internship and final projects for students, but everything will be done by the students, only the training will be given by us, right? and research outsourcing services for students, researchers, and institutions, right? Students, we train, like currently two uh, trainings are going on. One is on Monday, Wednesday, Friday on image processing, and other is on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday on data analytics between 7 and 8, 8.30 p.m. in the night through online mode, all right? So we train on the latest technology that are shaping the future of the industries, right? And for researchers, we have like nine researchers, like one-to-one -one guidance from their ideation, like how do they need to develop it and what are the tools they need to develop it and how to write good journal papers and until publications in renowned journals. And then for institutions, like we are trusted partners for training and make the students job ready. Right. As on date, we have trained only students like 5,000 plus and 5,000 plus faculties are also trained. As the demand for technology still keeps growing and you need to stay relevant and employable in your job market. So uh, how do you, what are the tools that are needed, hands on projects, right, and for career groups. And these are the training stack and also we have included blockchain. I need to update it here like data analytics and web design development, like on HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, and also using Django. And what are the digital education tools for teachers? We have trained more than 7,000 plus teachers during the pandemic, how to take online classes and what are the open source tools available, right? For machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning, cyber security, and cyber forensics, we give training. Ontology, the knowledge management tool developed by Stanford University, right? Latex and on blockchain. And for researchers, we have guided 50 plus research scholars for project supports for paper publication and also for patent filing. Between 2021 and 25, the global research and development outsourcing service is expected to grow at the rate of 7.8%. So the demand for these qualified uh, researchers is really, really surging, and uh, we are enabling research scholarship to happen to this trend. So if you are doing your research, you can get connected with us. You can also, every month, we give a break researchers to give a talk to our uh, uh, community in my YouTube channel and every event I do share it onto the YouTube channel I have got like 2,000 subscribers and um, 2,700 plus subscribers and it will be really beneficial for them and these are the focus research areas that we do like new algorithms development for big data analytics data clustering using Hadoop framework hands-on and also new algorithms cloud computing right and data visualization like different tools like tableau power bi and in addition python right uh, predictive models what we discussed today and data mining and knowledge discovery, like how what are the optimization algorithms and a based web application for health analytics. And we have worked with 2,000 plus, uh, more than 2,000 plus institutions around the world. And um, these are set of courses that we have conducted. Like generally, we have 20 hours, 40 hours, for some 10 hours, for some eight. It could be customized 
bring to the organizations. So these are the solutions we have used for many institutions. And we develop software and give for a client web development, mobile development, AI-based web application, and knowledge management database. And we are trying to, we are in the process of developing it. Like what are the topics like paper bees so that you can find out cloud computing and what is your primary goal is it pattern or you want to publish your product. And then you can get it and you can get your guidance and you can register as a peer reviewer too. These are some colleges that we have worked on with. And in addition, because it's an NPO and uh, being available to the marginalized when they need us most during last December, we distributed 50 blankets to people on road. And, um, and every two months once, uh, we go in and uh, provide food uh, for people on road, right? You can see we travel around for three hours and then uh, we go visit them and we provide food and cloths, right? April, we provided them food and June, we provided food and little cloths for people on the road. And let's see, you can see this person doesn't have two legs. Actually, this mother and son are waiting near, near Nungam Pakam, you can see, waiting outside a hotel so that people will provide and they're very happy when we gave biryani and sari for Amma and for this brother, a shirt and lungi, and they're really happy. So if you've got any questions, you can ask. And this is our contact details, the website, and the email, and my number. I'll share it here with you. Any questions you have, you could ask. Now the floor is yours. Hope the session would have been useful to you. over to the organizers. Any questions you could ask? Can I ask you any questions related to the And uh, this is my YouTube channel. You can find it out. You can find Doreen Robin. I don't I cannot share because there is no chat option available. Uh, even the session is going on live, after which you can subscribe, like, and give your comments, your feedbacks on to this uh, video. And um, Like almost when I go online, I share all my content into it. Like these are like three days, uh, FTP and four on afternoon session about deep learning. I, I told you right, we have initial talk and uh, it's on AI industrialization. And there's another industry talk on virtual reality and um, on hand -ish. This is for ethical hacking on cybersecurity. And this is on women, emotional well-being, and predictive health care. It's a full uh, six-day session, right? Six-day session on e-learning tools, on innovations, on IPR. When yesterday I was into another college, Tirtanga Nadar College, right? for the talk on artificial intelligence and cyber physical system. So if you would. Uh, Subscribe to it, it will be really useful for you. 
yeah. right? And this is our website, cirf.co.in. Just share it. Maybe uh, you, if you wish, you could. Uh, cirf.co.in Professor, uh, the forum is open for discussion. So, any questions, ask the guest. So, what are queries uh, should be automating? Um, can you suggest some basic books or some resources where we could learn about ML or EA? It's, um, there are various content available, but the foundation or is... Content content as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There are like huge contents are available. Uh, when I do refer to it, some are a little deviating. Right, if you could take up a proper course and learn from, learn from the experts at least the basics, then you can progressively increase. There are plenty number of uh, websites. I cannot narrow down like this is one, that's one. There are many many uh, websites that are available. A lot of books, right? Complete uh, data analytics tools and uh, um, uh, the probably big data analytics and especially on pandas. That specific book could be read for your basics and then development of machine learning models. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but, uh, how do we go for fine-toning the model if it's uh, about fitting up? Pardon, please, could you repeat, Professor? Yeah, if the model is interfits the uh, data or the uh, data, how do we go for the fine-toning model so that it can use proper? Yeah, underfitting and overfitting of data, then you can go on for the different sampling techniques. For example, yeah, your data should not be underfitted. There are various applications, various tools, various Python packages that will tell you in visualization, right? In Python, so whether when your when your data is underfitted or it is overfitted, both will not give you accurate predictions when it goes real it is real time applications. So use the packages to visualize and find it out whether it's your data being properly fit. Uh, both are disastrous. Underfitting and overfitting. Which sampling suits best needs to be evaluated. Thank you. Welcome. Sir. Any more questions? Thank you. Welcome, welcome. My pleasure to thank you. So, again, on behalf of VRT, I extend this thanks to our chief guest, Dr. Dudi Robin, for providing 50 weeks about the machine learning techniques and about the classification process. So, I think uh, everyone got an idea about how to start the classification process and everything. So, once again, I thank you, ma'am, for interactive and informative and the knowledgeable sessions shared to everyone of us. So thank you. Uh, again, I want to thank the academic staff college coordinator, the faculty members who are attending this session, and also the research scholar for the past two hours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Uh, okay. So I request all participants to turn on your video for uh, taking the photo.
for one minute. Please turn on your video. Yes, please. Call it. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you, all the professors and scholars for listening to the talk. I hope it would have been useful for you. And the world is small. We'll get connected soon. Bye bye. Yes, so looking for what is saying. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome.